Since the early 1600s, telescopes have been the toolbox staple of the stargazer, used to pick out craters on the moon, the shapes of distant galaxies, and spy on the neighbours foolish enough to leave their curtains open. But if you've ever wondered what kind of sorcery could conjure a perfectly crisp image inside a tiny tube when all your eyes can make out is a wibbly smudge, then this is the video for you. To understand how telescopes work, we first need to understand why there's a limit to what we can see with the naked eye. When something is further away, it appears smaller thanks to perspective. And it also gets darker, eventually getting to the point where there's just not enough light bouncing off that object and reaching our eyes. So, better long distance viewing relies on two things gathering as much light as possible and increasing the apparent size of the distant object. One way of doing that is using lenses, curved pieces of glass that refract light, that bend it as it passes from air into denser glass. The first telescope was constructed around 1608 by a Dutch spectacle maker called Hans Lippershey. It consisted of two lenses aligned with each other, capable of magnifying objects up to three times. Light travelling from a distant object comes at us in parallel rays. When these rays enter the objective lens, that's the one facing the object, they refract. And because that objective lens has a bulging shape, it's convex, those light rays are bent towards each other. Inside the tube, these light rays converge until they meet at a focal point before then diverging out again. The thing is, with those light rays crossing over each other, the image is now upside down. Not to worry though, because when you're looking at space, there's not really an up or down, so it doesn't particularly matter. Now, the eyepiece lens, which I think you'll agree is a rather apt name for the lens closest to the eye, takes the now diverging light rays and straightens them out again, creating a virtual image on your retina. As this virtual image is closer to your eye than the real object, it has the effect of magnifying the image, tricking the eye into thinking the object is closer than it really is. The amount of light a telescope can gather depends on the size of the objective lens, and there are obvious practical limitations on how big you can make a giant lump of glass. The largest permanent refracting telescope was installed at the Yerkes Observatory in Wisconsin in 1897, and it has an objective lens over one metre in diameter. It weighs in at around 26 tonnes, but unfortunately it's one of those cases where bigger isn't necessarily better. Refractor lenses suffer from the problem of lost light. Some light that should pass through the lens actually bounces off it, just like when you see your reflection in a window. Not ideal when you're trying to pick out dim, distant stars. So the bigger you take the telescope and the lens, the more light escapes. The solution to this problem was the invention of the reflector telescope. Instead of bending the light with huge glass lens like a refractor telescope does, a reflector telescope uses vast curved mirrors. Different technique, but pretty much the same principle. Rather than a convex lens, which the refractor telescope uses, you use a concave mirror to receive the light, whatever it's being pointed at. The bowl shape of this mirror reflects the parallel light rays at an angle, so they all converge at the focal point before then diverging back out again. Most reflector telescopes then have a secondary mirror to deflect the image sideways so you don't have to put your face in front of the mirror, which of course would get in the way of the actual object. Finally, an eyepiece lens magnifies the image just as with the refractor telescope. Using a mirror like this gets around the problem of unwanted light reflections, because all the light should be reflected. However, just as with refractors, to get a lot of light you need a really big mirror. The good news though is that it's much easier to make a massive mirror than it is to make a massive lens. Mirrors simply have to be silvered reflective surfaces, and they don't even have to be a continuous smooth curve. The largest reflector telescope currently in operation is the Gran Telescopio Canarias in Las Palmas, which has a mirror that's made of 36 hexagonal segments. It's a whopping 10.4 metres in diameter. 
That's not the end of the story for reflector telescopes though. So successful are these giant mirrors that at least three more are currently under construction. Among them is the imaginatively named 30 meter telescope. And there are no prizes for guessing how big that one will be. And the superbly named European Extremely Large Telescope. I guess the 39.3 meter telescope didn't really have the same ring to it. Anyway, regardless of how big the mirror or lens on a telescope is, any scope on the ground will suffer the effects of atmospheric distortion, which can make any image of the stars look all wibbly wobbly. Oh, that's not the scientific term. That's just a Greg term. It is atmospheric distortion that makes stars appear to twinkle when you look at them with your naked eye. And to avoid it, most research telescopes are popped on the top of mountains where the air is thinner and there's a lot less light pollution. Or in a garden in Somerset. Yes, that's right. Our sister channel, Earth Unplugged, recently met up with Mark Payne Gill. He's a wildlife cameraman and he's actually built a fully functioning reflector telescope and observatory in his garden. I'll put the link to the full video at the end of this one so you can go and check that out. There's one surefire way of avoiding atmospheric distortion and that's to remove the atmosphere altogether by launching a telescope up into the vacuum of space now, hang on a minute, the almost vacuum of space. Light from other stars or the light that gets reflected off planets can travel undisturbed to the telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope, that was launched in 1990, is the most famous of these. It's a reflector telescope and it's produced some of the most memorable images of distant galaxies and nebulas. And get this, outside of the haze of the atmosphere, it's able to pick out objects with an accuracy equivalent to seeing a firefly in Tokyo from New York City. Before I wrap this up, though, I'm aware that I've only talked about optical telescopes, those that collect and magnify visible light, just like our eyes do. But there are a whole range of other ways to observe distant objects. For instance, there's the Spitzer Space Telescope. That's equipped with infrared cameras that monitor heat sources out in the depths of space. And the Kepler telescope, that keeps a watchful eye on over 100,000 stars at once, using sensitive visible light photometers to try and detect the passage of planets. It's fair to say that the simple act of seeing far has come on leaps and bounds in the last 400 years. We've gone from a crude three times magnification to being able to see unbelievable distances in remarkable detail. Personally, I'm looking forward to the next 400 years of insightful telescope names. I'm rooting for the unthinkably vast telescope, or perhaps the fantastically accurate reflector telescope. You can work out the acronym for that one yourself. Hope you enjoyed this one. Click here to subscribe. Uh, make sure you click here and go and watch the Earth Unplugged film in the garden in Somerset with that amazing telescope. And let us know what you think of this video or any curious questions that you've got in the comments below.